I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Souls Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. What's Edward. up, buddy? Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm great, dude. How about you? I'm doing okay. Not too bad. Uh, we have a listener, viewer, email. Hey. First, thanks to Ray for being a great guest. Let's start that out. That was Oh, fun. Ray was fantastic. Fun, yeah, fun so episode. Fun. So much yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it is upon us, and when I say upon us in our fields is the holiday party oh baby holiday party for a working class person was a lot like this in the days of old uh <laughs> is this a rhyme <laughs> i figured i would do like a, a working oh, class almost before christmas <laughs> that old chimney sweep that the, is <laughs> you could bang somebody at the holiday party oh yeah i'm sure that happens now but you used to really like you would go correct me if i'm wrong going to a wedding in before the year 2000 uh-huh as a man uh-huh and maybe as a woman uh-huh from what i've heard you're looking to get laid at a wedding interesting the holiday party had the same vibe it and even hard more hardcore holiday party for sure because you had a year built up of tension mm -hmm. and the new person at the job no one had gotten to them yet maybe and it was like a moment or it was someone that you've been like pining for who just got single, or they're not single, but you had enough booze in you to make the move. The holiday party. Dude, I worked at a place where they, you know, the people that come up with the holiday party too, like at a corporate place, like they're just, oh, well, this will be fun. They don't think it all the way through, oh, you know what I mean? It's like just some HR person is like, oh, this is, it was at a bar called Bed in this, Manhattan. Where were, you, where were you working? I was working at an advertising agency. Okay, so this like, is not like, like a waiter corporate. Holiday no, party. this is okay. a corporate place. And they, corporate used to get buck wild. Imagine being in the '80s though, and they would just drop all that coin on holiday parties. I mean, it, it was like that for a long time. Go ahead. So they have this part. It's, it's this place called Bed, where there's no oh, tables. No Bed, Sex in the City, ladies. They have a whole episode at Bed. It's where Burger fucking breaks <laughs> up with Sarah Jessica Parker's <laughs> character Carrie Bradshaw, and then his buddies are on a bed at Bed. Go ahead. I'm sorry about I love that. that you know that. <laughs> I know. Did you watch the whole season? Did you watch that whole the whole show? Oh, did I watch that show all the way through four different times? Oh my god! Really? Big Sex in the City. What did you think of the new uh, uh, thing? Could I had to bail on that. Yeah, Actually, read I for, heard it was, uh, I I heard it was a, really bad. I had to read. I read for a part though on that. Oh, did you? I have almost had parts. I could have, like all the touchstones of my like teenage into trying to be an actor, uh, comedian years. I've almost had parts on every like genesis of every show yeah, yeah, like yeah. that was a show that i l made me really love new york oh, not uh -huh, just be more because uh -huh. of like the scenery and the vibe right uh, -huh. uh i almost got on that show some others but i don't want to do all my failures today because i'm already <laughs> depressed <laughs> so you go to a party at bed so which is this, pretty swanky so you have this uh, this uh holiday party at bed I didn't go. I guess I was freelancing there at the time. I wasn't really an employee, so I wasn't invited, I guess, or allowed to go. But uh, and they don't have food, but they, they have just open have, bar. They just open bar and hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> oh my god! The hooking up that went on, like it was epic. The next day, I was like, "Oh, what? everybody was talking about." This. What was, was the like, What was the like? Big, there was a couple that the banged. One. There was a couple that banged at the, at the work party on a bed. You like, can't do that now. Dude, well, they got fired. You couldn't do that then. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. They got fired. Opening up places this. <laughs> they were, uh, what was that? Well, they fucked in public. It was probably 2006. Also, like, come on. You, the place is called bed. You're legit on a bed. Yeah. And you're hammered. Yeah. You're not going to fuck? Right. No food. You're not going to fuck? Yeah, exactly. You're encouraging me to fuck? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's what everybody was like, dude. This is nicer than my bed in my apartment. <laughs> dude, I would love to bang on this bed. This would be a st such a step up. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, so they got fired, uh, but there was like everybody was buzzing about it. I wasn't there, so I don't really have much of a story about oh. it. But when you were, uh, that was the hookup thing is a big thing at the holiday parties so for sure. My holiday parties have well, office holiday parties are especially when you work. I, I've worked in like insurance company mm -hmm. stuff. I've done a lot of jobs where the people aren't known for being the most exciting, fun. Yeah. And I feel like whenever there's a gathering where there's an open bar, they got a lot to prove. 
Oh, interesting. Because uh-huh. if you're like an accountant or an insurance person, you're the butt of every boring job joke. Oh, uh-huh. So I remember one year I invited a, a girl who I I dated pretty seriously and then we kind of were doing an on and off thing. And around that era of the party, we happened to be on an on situation. So I said, do you want to come to this party? Uh, she's a really beautiful woman, uh, totally out kicking my coverage. And we were <laughs> at the party and dancing and uh, a fat guy that was so docile at the job. I'm talking like, you remember in Shawshank Redemption in the beginning where they kill that fat guy? I'm not supposed to be here. And they, just, <laughs> they beat the shit out of him. They don't start remember. stop crying. And he dies. He was like that kind of guy at the job. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> this has been a mistake. <laughs> um, and then he blatantly hits on her like in front of me. So she's not in a place. She's just she's with just you. My You're plus, plus one. one. She's my plus one. And he's fucking And he's on hammered it. and he's going in to a point where How I go. How was his game? How was his game? Oh, was he's it, go- I mean. Was it. Uh, like a like guy who feet? thought he ran the 40 and 4-4 and tripped over himself the first step kind of game. Like just the what he th- saw in his drunk mind yeah. and what came out yeah. were very different. Oh, that's the best. And I, I had to say, I, you know. I it's almost worth it. Name. <laughs> it's his almost worth watching. <laughs> I know, right? And that's why I let it go on for a long time. Did you? Because yeah. she was really savvy and sure. super, like, she street knows how smart. She knows how to handle herself. A lot yeah. of, I mean, she, a lot of guys came at her. She right. knew how to handle herself. Yeah, so yeah. she was very much, plus we weren't together together. Right. So it wasn't like. Yeah, like I, you come in to As heavy. far as he knew, I was single and it was, but still, she was my date. Right. <laughs> but if you come in uh, too heavy, it, it affects your relationship with her. I want her then. to be her, herself. Exactly. You know, like exactly. He, if you say, like he, if he was being aggressive. If she gives you the eyes, like, yo. I got of you. Of course. So finally, it was just like, that's my dog is pissing me off too. <laughs> uh, they do that. Finally, <laughs> I had to say, Jim, all right enough now you know just like and i think uh he like apologized when we went back but the the funniest part of that party wasn't even that there was a lady who had a butt oh fuck i want to say this this way so bad fuck it not the greatest face Mm -hmm. but really worked out a lot and got like the fake boobs and she made money it was like someone that started out with no money Uh and then an insurance had made a lot of money because in that field of insurance I was in, uh, she got herself hot. Make, she went and got herself. She hot. tried to, but she. Uh-huh. But you know, you always have. <laughs> you you can never get. Take this from a guy who's a piece of shit like myself. Mm-hmm. It's always on you. Mm-hmm. No matter mm-hmm. how many showers you take, no mm-hmm. matter how much money you mm-hmm. make, or how ritzy you get, mm-hmm. it's always on you. Maybe your kids won't have it on them. Right. Right, but right. you're always gonna have a little stink on you. Yeah, you can't yeah, get rid of it. And I don't mind that stink. It I is what mind. I love it. I kind of like. She what... minded it. Oh, so yeah, she yeah. would walk around the office like, you know, really putting on a show that she belonged. Oh, right. Because I think when you make, I mean, she's probably making a million a year at the time. It's a lot of money, it's man. A lot of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. And in a great city like San Diego, uh, especially in the early aughts, like you could do something with that. It's a yeah. lot of money. Yeah. So she gets drunk. And I'm on the dance floor just dancing, you know, my date somewhere, probably talking to Jim. And uh, she comes up to me. This woman's very drunk. And she's wearing, like, she might be about 45, definitely looks all of 45, mm-hmm. but she's wearing, like, I thought her pussy was going to fall out of her dress. Oh, and this is, yeah. she's like a, a leader of the, she's the money maker of the, of the, the company. And her fake titties on display, awesome. Good for you. Mm-hmm. And she comes on the dance floor towards me, and she's. And I think she's fucking around. The dancing is so seductive. <laughs> right. I thought it was a joke. Right. I thought she was like make trying to make yeah. me look like an idiot. So I'm like yeah. dancing back. <laughs> I'm like fucking around, right? Because I'm thinking I'm in on the joke. Then she gets on her knees and starts to do this shit with her hair, like she's washing her hair and her eyes are closed. And then her mother, who worked there. <laughs> Wait, what? Her mom is there? <laughs> her mom's she's, there. <laughs> she's on her knees on the dance and, floor. And her mother get like tells her to get up and like walks her over. Oh. And her mother was like 70 years old. Oh, that's And that's the holiday party. <laughs> that's a good holiday party. <laughs> Where your mom scolds you like you're the fucking uh, I have things. So, you know what's funny is like I've had and we've talked about this so many times, but like I had all my shitty jobs and then I got that 
a good job, mm-hmm. right? So the holiday party difference between like the like when you're at a restaurant waiter versus when you got like a like a good job where people make money and people are respectable, like you know they're yeah. not a bunch of dirt bags, <laughs> <laughs> like such a difference. And like it's so funny because I, uh, I one of the first holiday parties I ever went to, I was a waiter at a hula hands. And um, I started as a bus boy. I guess I was still a bus boy there. Um, and what an awful job being a bus this, boy is. Hey Oof. man, I was making money, dude. I was 18 but years the old. The job itself, I'm talking about, like touching people's running. food and yeah. But you don't have to speak to people as a bus boy. Oh, you could just bake. We would just get baked. Oh, just smoked out and, and just yeah. And you were eating the food off the plates. Yeah, and shit, like, you with just the guy, running, yeah. yeah, right. We we're just running. You just head down like just and uh, you know joking around with like. Waitresses that are like three years older than us are kind of hot. You know what I mean? It was fantastic. Uh, I didn't have to talk to anybody. It was just like be fast and don't fucking break dishes. Yeah, that was (laughs) all. Really, that's all you have to do. That's it. Yeah. (laughs) So anyway, so it's that. That's the holiday part that gets. I just imagine you talking to other bus boys like. Polly Walnuts talks to Christopher when he first gets past, you know, when he first gets his ma- as a made man. He's like, only, hey, everyone has all these problems. Our problems are broken down to two things. One, don't break any dishes. Two, be fast. That's all you need, my that's friend. It. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> that's fucking clear. All the headaches everyone has in this world, all are broken down to two. <laughs> I love that fucking job, dude. That was such a cool job because, like, I was like, I felt like an adult, you know. I was like yeah. eighteen years old as a bus boy. I'm making like, you know, I make like eighty dollars on a Thursday night. This is back in like, oh my god, you're living at home, two living at home, getting paid five dollars, four four dollars an hour. Like it was like it was getting a paycheck too. Yeah. Anyway, um, so the holiday party. This is how. Isn't great- that funny? How fucking little we're satisfied with oh, trash people like you yeah. and I. That was the shit. Like, that was great. All yeah. right, keep going. Hang <laughs> it's on. so funny how people would... I, I'm listening to you say that. I'm going, that's so depressing. Well, and the other thing is... Even like, as a kid, you're thinking... Yeah, but like, I was liked, too. Like, yeah, being, yeah, yeah. Being in a job and everybody like liked having me as the bus boy was yeah, kind of like sucked cool. into like you know what i mean like oh you're working like you would see a waitress light up like oh you're busting tonight oh, man. you know see, it's like nice. oh that's cool it's yeah. all that positive feedback yeah, you're you probably look, not getting anywhere else Spe- yeah it well, was especially from like an attractive oh, waitress yeah. oh, too God. attention yeah. at all like yeah. any kind of recognition like this is great i'm just fucking baked out of my mind time where a pretty girl knew your name oh. not a lot of power oh. i don't think women ever feel that way or maybe they do Maybe they do. Maybe yeah. I guess like teenage girls would feel that way about their like, the dream boat of the school, I guess. But yeah, I maybe guess it I is the same. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Same. But I remember that going a long ways like into my <laughs> teens. Like when, when it a, wasn't when I was a kid. When a girl knew your name. Yeah. yeah, yeah I remember totally. having that really yeah, unhealthy I, relationship with women. I where guess the I difference for pedestal. Women, when women have like. Wait, how does he know my name? <laughs> right. Fuck, it's he like, knows my name. How does this guy fucking know my name? <laughs> Are you walking in my car? At... <laughs> Bus boy knows my name. <laughs> so, uh, Hula Hands Holiday Party. It's and you're a, a bus boy. So, the Hula Hands Holiday Party is at a Red Roof Inn. Is that not the most... Aw- I'm surprised they're not all in business together. Dude, it was hilarious. They just rented out a like couple... A little- Couple of, room? No, it was a couple of hotel. A Red Roof Inn is like a motel, dude. It's a well, two- I know it. <laughs> hey, <laughs> old the kid on motels. That's what I'm saying. I don't think there's a conference room at a Red Roof Inn. Uh, you never know. I but there was two floors. To me, that's high class. That's where I've been staying. <laughs> I think a red roof like, in has like a conference room. Oh, hoity thoity. Oh, <laughs> oh what are you complaining about, bus boy? Big man. <laughs> so they rent two red they roof got a, in they rooms. They got two rooms and a red roof in, and they're encouraging people, like, if you want to get your own room. Please do. Yeah. We're going to be, these are. Did they the, get a deal or something from the red roof guy? I they must have. I think there was a deal. Yeah, yeah there was a, there was totally a deal. And um, so me and the other bus boy, we get a room with these hot waitresses too like, you're all gonna share a room yeah and it is like i'll never forget the leading up to it you must have had a nervous stomach dude we were like we're gonna get fucking laid we are gonna get so laid you know what all i mean the like men mistakes we do and she one of the hot uh she was so why would they want to share with you though can we start there why why to, well they knew they we could they could take advantage of us oh they were the hot chicks. yeah girls know they right knew, away what a mark when they, they see a mark. we were marks 100 yeah. percent. so they were going to commandeer our room women. and we we're going to have to pay half of it because they're going to bang they're not going to bang us no 
they're gonna bang uh, some guy, somebody who, else. Yeah, yeah, right. In yeah. the room, and they're gonna tell us to get out. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what? So That's so what's gonna happen. Oh. <laughs> so this is their plan because I knew that because we were like, yeah, dude, this is fun. Right. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go for Molly, dude. He's like, yeah, yeah, you go for Molly, I'll go for fucking Kristen. So you guys decided who we're you're like gonna go for, even though you, you know game, no we're nothing. We're talking about it. Yeah, we have, no, yeah, we're just dumb bus boys, yeah. stoners. And um, I remember we're like, kind of just getting, they're putting their makeup on, and I go, hey, do you guys have condoms? And we both kind of froze up. <laughs> like, yeah, we had them, but I was like, why are you asking now? Because they wanted to borrow our con, they wanted our condoms. So there are already guys so, so at, the at that moment, and they can't stay with those guys because then it makes it obvious that they want to fuck those guys. Right. So I'm like, they're just, Ooh. they're just, we're getting fucking hot. Like I don't know if Todd like realized it at that moment, but I was like, oh, you knew then? Yeah, because I'm like, I'm not giving her my condom because no. like, she's just taking my. We're just getting burned yeah because now you're paying you for her to be going like this like hey do you guys have condoms yeah like that now we're bros now we're on a bro level i just got friended right there. yeah 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 yeah. yeah. you just got broed totally yeah so i'm like no and then we both kind of went mom he must have not known too because we just went my mom she goes are you guys planning on getting laid tonight and i was like little bros yeah (laughs) and i was like yeah we were Until about four <laughs> seconds ago, I thought I had <laughs> pussy right here. <laughs> uh, and we just both fucking like just total like just mowed out. Like geez, we were just like. Bull, bull, bull. <laughs> yeah. bull. Uh, but then so then what happens is uh, this is what's so great about like a like a trashy party like that. Because you can we called our friends. Like once okay, it, so it's going on in two selected rooms that are joined are joined together, or no? They're like next to each next other. Next to each other, so people are just going in and out. In like, and oh, this out. is the we all have drinks in both rooms. Yeah. Okay, and who and, and, and everyone pitched in for the party. Yeah. So everyone's kind of a contributor to why you're having the party. Right. You got a room with these two girls. Some other people got rooms. There's a bunch of rooms. So, so everyone's kind of like now, there's not like just eight, in those there's rooms. There's like eight, nine rooms. So everyone's kind of like yeah. jumping around. Right. And how many people at the party that actually work at Hool Hands? Probably 20. 20. Yeah. And yeah. now all the 20 that are there are inviting other friends. Well, okay. And then we called. I called. Because uh, it had been mentioned that we were going to be at the, yo, we got a, a party with these girls, you know, because we were bragging about of course, getting a room yeah, with these girls. Who are you bragging to? Where are the fucking quickie <laughs> Our mark? crew. Our crew. No, like uh, Jimmy, Tommy, like fucking Chucky, all, all the guys, all, all yeah, the guys yeah. we hung with. Because Todd and I were like, we were like, I got the job and then I got Todd the job and we were like, you know, but we were a part of a, like a larger crew growing up, like 11 of us. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> word got out that we had this party and then the next thing you know, and it was always like this growing up, like if somebody like had bought, like if word got out that like I bought like a, a quarter ounce of weed, yeah, like every, uh, smoke your shit. all my friends would be like so at my front door the next shit. day, like, yeah. yo, what's going on? What are you doing? Let's go. Uh, Let's go smoke. Fuck that so noise. like, uh, but that was just the way it was. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just that that was our crew. Uh, so the next thing you know, the fucking crew shows up. To oh. this party, and when you bring your dirtbag friends, oh, and around your work it, people too, oh, oof, it was awesome. Really, why was it awesome? <laughs> because it would have now been, it evened out the playing field. You knew you were going to get laid. I, once I knew I was getting laid, I and I saw those guys show up. I was like, "Fucking oh, hey, let's beef. just this is ours now." Yeah, we yeah, just yeah. took it over really? and just ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> just ruined it. <laughs> you ruined it. Uh, well, we got just drunk. We would, like started singing like commercial songs, like uh, like songs that you oh, would hear on the yeah, radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just. At, in people's faces. Jeez, I would why well, like I would hate you. Uh, oh, everyone hated us, mm-hmm. dude. And it did was, they even kick you out? Where are they gonna, what's a red Did you bring thing? all them back to the fucking room with those we, girls? What we did was no, we left those fucking girls. Well, where'd they go? If they shared they the went room back with you. to the room and we went and we were hanging out in the uh the work rooms. The rooms that the uh that the uh, that the restaurant had yeah and people are like sleeping on the floor like people that didn't get rooms and we're just in there with the hors d'oeuvres like food fight just Jeez. just screaming at the top of our lungs like singing like songs like unclaimed freight <laughs> <laughs> just what? just commercial just dude, just that insanity. sounds like the most unfun party ever oh my god i loved it dude did, did you get fired day? the next time you went back to work or was no, there no, 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 no issues no it was no issues Those girls didn't... it was a restaurant dude what they gonna do i don't know i, was I mean top, that sounds insane i was a top bus boy <laughs> <laughs> well ed if you weren't number one 
finally, meritocracy. <laughs> a worthy love here on the working class. All right. We have an email from Dan. Uh, Dan said he's a huge fan of the show and he hopes he makes it on air. So you made it on air, Dan. Hey, Dan. So this is the subject of the least wonderful time of the office year. Hey, guys, just writing in to complain about my biggest gripe of the holiday season, work parties. I work for a financial services firm, and the amount of obligatory holiday events is oppressive. Not only is it the most exhausting time of year, but now I have to spend a week catching slash, sorry, spend a week watching my coworkers get hammered over lunch or miss out on my own family time to pound cheap wine in a hotel ballroom while people I can barely stand on a daily basis, let alone in a setting where they're letting loose. I'd rather my company divide up the cost of these parties and give everyone a check so I can actually yeah. enjoy my holiday instead of dreading it. Yeah, that's, okay. dude, that is something, like, when you see those parties, the cost of those parties, and it's like, dude, but we didn't get raises this year? Yes. That's insane. Okay, I, I agree, but I think I'm trying to figure out, so the company, so a company has a budget, right? Mm-hmm. Each division of that company, I'm talking about large companies, right? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming a financial service company, it's probably pretty big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the start of the year, there's a budget. And if you don't, just much, like, like, like the government, if you don't use that budget, they lower your budget. But no one wants their budget lowered. Right. So yeah, they're different line items, throwing saying, a basically. party yeah. is in the budget. Right. And you have to use it. Yeah. So that budget has nothing to do with the money you're getting. Of course, because so, it's, a, it's a thing like if they, oh, if they, well, if we raise your uh, salary, we have to pay you that every year. It's not just a party. Yep. Yeah, it's not just this one thing, one off thing. And they use that as like, oh, it's a benefit. Look what we did for you. Right. It's something they can point to that they did. Mm -hmm. So it serves so many purposes for the company that they can't cut you a check, even though I think everyone would rather have that. You know, a check as like a bonus at the end of the year, which I think some companies do do if they make over a certain amount, blah, 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 blah. I've never been a part of a company that throws multiple parties. I feel like. Yeah, multiple th parties this, sounds like. Yeah. Well, I think some of that sounded like you get roped in. Some of that just sounded like. Oh, oh just in roped general. In so there's that to aspect like, too, yeah, right? Just Where the people, actual, just like, hey, we're all going to go. Just like eight, eight employees. I can't stand that. Like, that, I, I don't. That I would not be. So here's the office protocol that. I think applies to all business, even comedy. Uh, you got to go to one or two things. You just yeah, got to yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you try to pick the one or two things that are going to be seen by the most people so you can just talk to everyone you need to talk to and then get out of there kind of thing, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, around this time of year, if you haven't gone to many things throughout the year, now you are, you're probably going to have to show up to some of these other things. You can't really bail. I can't stand when they go, this is not a, a company-sponsored event. I, then I ain't going. Like, you know how uh -oh. people at the job try to... We're not we're not real friends. Like, we work at the job and we're right. cool, but there's not a whole lot of jobs I've ever worked where four or five of the people there I liked so much that I would do something outside of the job with. Like, I'm not giving a... Especially now with a kid, I ain't giving a night up to just talk about work. Because that's all we have in common, you know? Yeah, and I mean. That shit happens, too, around the holidays. Yeah, some of those. If you're just, it depends on the people, though. Like, if you're, like, I've been with, I've gone out for drinks with people that are just drunks. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's fun. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, oh we yeah. could just. Yeah, but that's We could just no, black out and get in trouble. But you're talking about when you were a drinker and a partier. Right. You're not anymore. Right. So imagine you worked a job. In an office. Oh, dude, I'm there 20 minutes, 30 minutes. That's 40 right. Minutes. I'm you, in and you're out. in and out. In and out. Yeah. And when you have to do five of those, like what Dan's saying, oh, yeah. and over the course of a week and a half, because now they're all going to start happening, like because they want to make sure they catch everyone before they go on their their winter breaks. Yeah. Dude, that's a lot of the extra little ones. Oh. The smaller ones are harder than the bigger yeah. ones. Yeah, and then you have sure. your own family obligations on top yeah. of all yeah, that. Yeah, like yeah. they just throw a whole lot at you. And I feel like now, since uh, the pandemic's you know over, according to the mm -hmm. the economy, like, the, like all the businesses decided like we're never doing any kind of COVID. No, so yeah. 
I don't even hear COVID talked about anymore. I don't, when people get it, they're like, oh, it's a cold now. Yeah. Uh, but now I feel like people are doubling down to have these fucking parties so they can show on the year ends and show on the reports and show their leadership that this is what we organized. Well, with the work from home stuff, too, I would imagine it has been like, no, we need everybody to get together. Yep. For, uh, we got we to. It becomes almost yeah. uh, required. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without them saying it's required. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I'm totally. And I don't, you know, it's not about complaining about a party either. I totally understand, you know, the point of view of, listen, can we just figure out a way to streamline these things into one? Big party. I tell you what, though, dude, I, I've been it's so funny because we were talking about the, the restaurant party and then I get my first good job. I'm an assistant editor at the SNL or the yeah. party stuff. And um, those were that's parties. a good party. But that's a creative job party. I would love to go to one of those, those parties. parties. And man, I partied like I was still like a, like the like the guy singing, yeah. the re singing the commercials like shirt off. I got pictures. There's there was a holiday party. At um, Studio Fifty Four opened up yeah. again, and yeah, it was just kind of like a bar. Yeah, did I tell you about this? No, but I remember it opening up. Again. Oh, back I remember up. this. So, yeah. so they ran it out for like a um a holiday party, and um it was like a seven. They were like doing and and right everybody dressed up in seventies. You know, I never dressed up. It, you've heard my dress up stories. The <laughs> I either go like you know you I'm go gonna get stupid in. I'm gonna I'm gonna or I'm not or yeah. so far out you miss out on pussy yeah I'm just not doing it yeah right <laughs> but somebody had like a boa like a pink boa yeah. like thing and um I had called that was always the thing too is like you know halfway through the party was calling the drug dealer to yeah get like drugs you know I was like oh I'll be out for, I gotta run downstairs real quick I just love how he hits up the the job drug dealers will go anywhere to sell the product oh yeah yeah you gotta admire the hustle of a drug dealer oh dude. He was just driving around all night. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Fucking Meet me great. downstairs. Hell yeah. And he would be pissed if I wasn't like... Yeah, prompt. Outside. Yeah. Would, like waiting for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Because he's got, you know... I got rounds, bro. I'm driving around, man. I got a fucking... I, I can't sit here. Shit, man. This product's hot. All this fucking... <laughs> with my flashers <laughs> on with a bunch of fucking cocaine. <laughs> bagged up. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I didn't think about the crime part. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's like a sitting duck. Yeah. I can't sit here with a fucking... Like, because if I wasn't there, he would leave. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He would sit there maybe like a minute, two yeah, minutes, and, and then he's, he's like, gone. dude, I yeah. left, Because it could be a setup, too. Yeah, he's just... I can't sit like no, that. Yeah, never. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I get uh, I get the drugs, and now I'm like, oh, baby, shirt is off. <laughs> Work party. What is that? Okay. Shirt is I come off. I from a few... I don't... I'm not directly related to a shirt off part of your guy but i i know a lot of shirt off part of your guys what's the mentality what's the drink level when it starts to get to my shirt's got to come off i'll start with the mentality okay um I, I was always a skinny kid okay i was always a skinny kid and i and uh, growing up i like i we, we talked maybe this about this before like i the the heroes that i had as a like a six-year-old were the the derelicts that hung out on the corner in front of my house and there was one of them that just had a big gut, and he would always have his shirt off, just strutting and just pushing the gut out. And I, as a six, like, I, you know, I had parents who loved me. I had a, my dad was my t-ball coach. You know what I mean? I had good influences, and I would look at that Why guy. Why that guy? Oh, it's my hero. He was my hero. What I, about him? I remember walking around like him as a six-year-old. My you dad are going, him. My dad, and now I am him. Yeah, no, no, I know. I've become that, dude. It's crazy. I remember my dad going, look at him. He looks like the Haran fucking uh, piece of shit. Hey, stop walking around like that. <laughs> How would your dad yelling at your future self? <laughs> <laughs> it's like your dad <laughs> went into the future and started yelling at you. <laughs> Don't walk around like that. Don't eat that. It's expired. <laughs> Uh, so I've always had that in me, like the shirt off, gut thing. I always wanted a gut. I like. What I always... is it? A, but what did he do to make you his hero, the derelict? Just well, we talked about it. the one guy. One of the guys had that unicycle. Remember we talked about that? <laughs> I love how you reference it as if, come on, man, you remember the guy with the unicycle? Why would I, why would I not? Did we talk be... about that? That guy no. with the unicycle? Yeah, he had like a. a a uh, forty foot unicycle. He used to. Uh, he used to. We talked about a unicycle. <laughs> what, what is the forties? <laughs> yeah. He went to kindergarten, right? His unicycle. <laughs> he would climb up the light pole to get on it. 
Yeah, dude. My hero. <laughs> it was I was the coolest fucking thing, dude. He's riding around a neighborhood on a forty foot fucking unicycle, dude. It was insane. Oh, so those man. guys, I was those were like Talk magic. About property value being down. That <laughs> the, you, the unicycle guy lives here? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna pass. Yeah, yeah they did not. <laughs> They're not gonna be good for property value. The neighborhood <laughs> wanted them gone. Yeah. And and meanwhile, a six year old me is like they're the coolest people ever. Like, I just looked up to them. So, like, for me, like, I always wanted to be, I was like, I need to get this gut going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the mentality is you finally have a little bit of a gut. So now every, and it was that job, too, when I first, uh, so we would do, uh, like, anytime there was a picture taken, I would always. Show your gut. I would, like, right, all right, ready? One, two, three, cheese. <laughs> I would lift up my shirt just as they said cheese. So all the pictures would always just be me holding my gut out. Okay. So it became like a whole thing. And then I would start taking my shirt off. That was. But shirt. like what drink is it where you're like now is the time? Usually. What's the what, timing of it? The Coke. Hit. Once the Coke. Hits, oh, the Coke. Usually, yeah, a little Coke. Hit. Then the shirt comes yeah, off. Yeah, shirt comes off. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Your um, chase for mediocrity is astounding. Yeah. Like to chase mediocrity. Yeah, loved it. Most people just don't do anything and they are just mediocre. You will run against progress yes. for the mediocrity. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, fascinating. It was, uh, it, yeah. There's, like, it's funny that we're, like, the, not to keep bringing up the name of the show, but Working Class was like, I've always wanted to be that. This. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I was getting good grades in, uh, in school, and I remember telling my dad I want to go to uh, <laughs> trade, school? <laughs> trade school. And he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> trade school? You're a poor father. <laughs> I mean, now that I'm a dad, if my son came to me and he had all, like, he was smart, he had opportunity, he's loved, and like, you know, I'm going to be the janitor of the high school. Yeah. That's my goal. What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing oh, this? makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me happy. I just, as you said that, Janet of Florida, I was thinking of a nice, clean. It's like when Oscar thinking... the Grouch is complaining about, like, it's too nice in here. <laughs> right. Add some uh, dog shit in here. Really? I need... <laughs> when you said that, I just imagined, like, a cleanly buffed linoleum floor. And I was like, yeah, dude, that's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. I would take my, I would take my shirt off. And then, um, then it was like right as like camera digital cameras were kind of coming so people, out. People like there's there's some great that picks. era that was outrageous. To I'll people. put some pics up with the thing. It's oh, some man. good ones with me with the shirt off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, there's so there was such a good one that one of the um, clients because there was clients there too at the party. There was awesome. always like there was always clients. There. <laughs> Just great have yeah. Ed McGowan at your holiday party yeah. with very important clients. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, have they, retainers at your company. They snapped all these pictures of me. This was how bad I was at this job. I was an assistant editor. I just get hired there. I, or I'm not even I'm still in the mailroom. I don't know how to work a computer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to do like I thought my we talked. This yeah, before, yeah. I thought I had the only way you could get your email was on the computer that your email signed on to. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So the um, my my partner in the mailroom, he got a hold of the pictures and he put them on every desktop of every assistant computer. So you would just walk around and you would just and see, see this you. picture of me with my gut at shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the clients was like, yo, dude, I want that picture. Uh, can I use that picture for this book I'm putting together? I was like, yeah, sure. So I just gave it to him. I didn't, you know, it's not even really my picture because I didn't yeah. take the photo, but it's of me. And I, you know, I, I, I might have said signed something or I might have just said, yeah, whatever. Whatever. He puts it in, he puts out this book called 50 Boyfriends Worse Than Yours. And you're one of them? I, yeah, it was like a fictional thing. Oh. So he just takes pictures of people, funny pictures of people, and, and then like gives them like, I was like boyfriend for now. And it has this crazy picture of me, and then he writes, you know, just a little two paragraphs. So it's a funny, it's a humor book, right? So your chase for mediocrity has gotten you great jobs. You're published. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a jet black. <laughs> I mean, you literally have, uh... Did cocaine with Jimmy Fallon. I mean, like... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to think about this holiday party thing because I feel like there's something we're not saying that happens at holiday parties. I, I hate the gift exchange. That's another thing I hate. Buying gifts for strangers. Oh. So what did you, did you ever do like the Pollyanna? We did like the Pollyanna. What the hell is that? Like a white elephant? I guess. Is it Pollyanna? It's where, where you fucking get to take a gift back that you like. So like everyone gets a number. 
You just buy one. This was you, you buy just, one gift. You put it in a pile. There's like a set amount that everyone agrees upon, and then uh, you get it, and then you open it in front of everybody, mm -hmm. and then you someone can steal it. You get one steal. Oh, you could steal it? So if you like somebody Yo, else's like gift this. that was open 10 minutes ago. But then somebody could steal it from you, They too? could take it. Yeah, but you can also That's get That's like a drinking game. <laughs> well, I mean, anything could be with you a drinking game. We, I think we figured that out. I, mean, I, I just love how you were like, when you get hammered and people you love to drink with. I go, yeah, remember what? But you, you're sober now. So imagine going somewhere sober. It's impossible to do it with people yeah. from your office. But that is a, I hated that. Uh, I went to this holiday party once. It was. Uh, with this pretty prominent person in entertainment. Uh-huh. And there's a lot of other people from entertainment there. Those motherfuckers steal some shit out of White Elephant. They do not hold back. They are like, you wouldn't know that they were so well off the way they uh, act about the right. White Elephant. Uh-huh. I got stuck with the fucking worst gift. It was like a $100 minimum, even for people that are invited that probably weren't. $100 <laughs> gift? That's a lot. Uh, it was nothing for them, but you know there were other people there that definitely hundred dollars a lot for them, and it became more of like a really like someone bought something stupid and put a hundred bucks in it. <laughs> I was like, I want that. Those motherfuckers, you think they would pass on taking it for me? They stole it. Oh wow! <laughs> and they were and the per, I'll tell you off air who fucking stole it. Oh wow! You'll yeah. know them. I want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They. Oh my god. Uh, so I hate that shit at a holiday party. I hate games at a holiday party. I don't want to play game. I don't want to have to focus on trivia. I don't I need mean, a gathering. I don't yeah, but need here's it. Here's the thing. I mean, I feel like you've never really had work friends. Do you? I have. Yeah, because I, you don't yeah. hang out with them at least, and like just shit on the party. Like no, to me, that's know, always the most fun. Is like going. But they're not find artists like me, dude. They're not. You know, even if they are taking like taking shots, they're uh -huh. so. It's a kind of okay. Okay. Oh yeah. And, you know, and plus. These jobs, people have, they're good jobs. Mm -hmm. A lot of them don't have complaints about the job. Well, let's talk about uh, a comedy uh, holiday party. Comedy well, that's a whole different story. Comedy yeah. holiday parties, there's always like a fight. <laughs> there's no, always, I have, honestly, there's I haven't been to one in so long. There's, there's always some kind of drama. Like somebody shows up that like somebody doesn't like. Really? Uh, oh, yeah. dude, I, I don't, I've never experienced that. Do uh, tell. What's his name? Um, are we naming names? Or Mackenzie are you name Graves uh, knocked. I knocked this dude out, man. Uh, I wasn't there. I had already left, and, but I heard about Where it. was it? Uh, the Lantern. It was at the Lantern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They had a Lantern the holiday party? Comedy shop. Yeah, so it was a couple, I guess it was a, before the pandemic. I can't remember. <laughs> Whatever. I, I'd rather talk about what, what a good holiday party is rather than who got knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like their only takeaway. That made it good. <laughs> I, dude, I love the fucking drama. No, there's so much more drama. You know what though? I find it to be too high schooly with comedy because oh, it's everyone's so, high so mad at what someone else is getting or what yeah. they're not getting, and now you're at a club that either is working you or more than likely not working you, but you happen to make the list somehow to get invited. Mm -hmm. It's just there's so much tension. It's like going to a a wedding at one of my for one of my family members. It's like there's all these beefs that so have you don't are enjoy unspoken. the beefs though. Not anymore, man. Oh, I, see, it's I like it. It's I a little. Too, I get a little like you're um, good at disassociating in a sense of understanding that you are separate from what is going on uh -huh. in front of you. Yeah, I have this problem of making myself involved uh, in that. Yeah, somehow, some way, yeah, I, I'm involved, I, and I don't want to do that. I can totally. I don't know how to shut that off. Yeah. So it, it makes me avoid any situation where I think it could put me in a place of being my old self. Yeah, see, that's funny. And I need, I'm, I'm learning how to not do that, but that's a hard thing. Because I, we, I do have, there is a thing, and it, we totally differ on this now that I'm thinking about it. I get such a kick out of somebody getting mad at me. I get so, it's yeah. so funny to me. Yeah, you do. Like when somebody gets mad at me, oh man, I glee. I'm like, what are you going to do? Unless it's like something where like it's about to escalate. Quick. Yeah. I, unless I can recognize there's going to be a physical element to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? That's different. Yeah. Uh, but like somebody on the subway who gets like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh, egging somebody on is it funny. Makes, like I laugh just involuntary. Like I laugh like more than I do <laughs> it like comedy sometimes. Like this guy, I was like, you, I, you know, 
clearly he thought I should have been out of his way as he was walking on the tracks, and he, and he did this. The fuck, man! Uh, <laughs> just, that is funny. I just bust it just, out laughing people in People being face. irritated at the dumbest thing, oh, like uh, that is funny. I get such joy out of it. You know, though, I um, I think it's just the reality of how those situations to me always ended up. It's it's kind of frightening for me to be in those scenarios. Right. It's like a, a very. I get very like it's my defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fight or flight. Yeah, it's yeah, never yeah. like. Funny from afar, it's funny. Like yeah, I yeah. could watch that happen down the platform right. and think yeah, it's funny. Yeah, yeah, right. But when once you get me, like if you get me on a car and a guy's acting nuts, yeah, I'm making an action. The in a car in the subway is, is, the, is it, different. I'm too, yes, I, you got to be careful. Just yeah, but, like at a comedy, sh like if we're at a comedy holiday party, I've never had that experience where I saw people fighting. But uh, you know, like anything where it's like you know me and I. I'm not at the club that often, so I'm not, you know, I'm still getting to know people there, and it's a little awkward, and then there's a person there who maybe, it's just a lot of social elements that I got to really work through. It's not an easy hang for me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's on me, you know, it's something I'm, you yeah, know, I no, got to get better at that. That's something I, I'm trying, but it, it fair, is hard for me. To be fair, I also have that. Yeah, I also have that. Like the uncomfortableness of like being not knowing everybody, and like sometimes if you're not with uh, like a buddy, like if you're kind of solo a little bit or, yeah. you, or like your buddy, like you kind of like. It's like you said with work friends. You know, sometimes I feel like at those parties, I don't really work at that job often enough <laughs> to have work friends there. Mm -hmm. So you have people that have built relationships. They all work the same clubs together. They work that club together. It's like everyone kind of has a story about the other one or had a night out. And that for me is a th you know, that's just not what I do. Here's the, but I'll, 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 I'll this is what I uh, use because I, I, I have that same. But thing. also, okay, let me just say this before you yeah. answer. I also don't value those hangouts as fun things. Uh huh. Like I don't want to be there. Right. It's not like I, I'm sure if I went in going, I'm so excited to meet some of my colleagues right. and share experiences. Like it doesn't, those parties don't do that for me. So it's already a force. So I already start out in a place where I'm forcing anyway. So that's just where but my mind is. what I was going to say is when you're saying you have these feelings, the, 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 the reality of it is everybody kind of has those feelings. Sure, sure, sure. That, to, to think that everybody's like so socially adept. No, and, you know, and, you know I what passed I mean? the part about how everyone else feels. That's just how I feel. Uh huh. So I'm really focused on like, what am I feeling? Uh huh. And I don't want to be here already. So you know, and now uh -huh. I'm like having to force myself to have these pep talks to go into this place and do what? What is a value there for me uh -huh. to apply what you just said to me? You know what I mean? Like, what is the value where I go in and go? Everyone feels this way, Josh. There is no value for me. Uh huh. Uh -huh. The value of going there for me is solely opportunity. And if I'm doing the math, most of the time when I go there, I don't walk out with any opportunity. Yeah, but this is so calculated. I mean, it well, feels what, 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 it's business now. I mean, I'm not here for any fun. There's nothing fun anymore, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the business. <sighs> if I can't get an opportunity, why am I showing up to this fucking place? <laughs> You guys don't book me. You don't like me. What? Well, you know, uh, the most fun guy in the room. Ninety-nine percent. You can't hang with me when I really put it down. I know. Party we go, dude, when we're on the road, we're fucking. That's awesome. But that's yeah. hey, it's our terms too on the road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, sure, we're yeah. the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't got to abide by anybody yeah, else's yeah. bullshit, yeah, bureaucratic, yeah. fucko, polit politic yeah. shit. We do what we do. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of when I, we're at the fuck them, Ed. When we're like we go we're like we're at New York Comedy Club. We just you come and go. You, you you're in there. You're that's out a fun there. Hang. Yeah, I, I just I was at New York Comedy yeah. Club uh, last week. Um, yeah, well, that's a good club. Yeah, you're fun there, times. People, you're, the people you're talking well, to is hey, now. That's a fun club that? to be hanging out at. Some of these places I don't need to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So that's what that's the. Where's well, the cutoff? The there are places yeah, yeah. that are interesting to go, and there are places there's that more aren't. More fun places, yeah. Interesting to yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah, there's so, good hangs. There's the, my they point are is good there, hangs. there are good hangs. I that agree. That was my point. Yeah, yeah. I there are a handful of comedians. Anytime I run into them, it is a kinship. It's a brotherhood, yeah. and I love it. Love, I it. love, love it. I there are about ten comedians when when I see them, those are my friends. Yeah, it's a love affair, yeah, and yeah. I love it. Uh, and it's the only place they exist, and that's why I'm still choosing to do stand up. Is because 
you can't replace that. There's nothing to replace it. Yeah. It's a thing, and you get, if you have it, you're grateful for it, and you hold on to it. And I'm still there, and I'm super grateful for those 10 people. Beyond that, my attitude is what you're seeing now. <laughs> You can follow me at Josh Accardo and go to joshacardo.com for all tour dates and content. Follow me on Instagram at edmcgallancomedy. Uh, you can go to edmcgallan.com to see my show dates. Uh, we have an email address. Send us another email. That yes. was a lot of fun. Uh, workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. We will see you guys again next week. Don't get in trouble at the holiday party. See you guys. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 